It's the world's longest shared border. A line between Canada and the U.S. And every day, hundreds of thousands cross it. If you're driving or flying, it's a simple routine. Show your passport, answer a few questions, and get waved through. But if your medical history includes a suicide attempt, don't expect those border agents to treat you the same way. Here's Jackson Prosco with a cautionary tale about the information age. She's four foot nine, hard of hearing, with rheumatoid arthritis. A graduate student who reads Plato and loves cats. But in the eyes of U.S. Homeland Security, Lois Kamenetz is a threat. He indicated to me that I was not going to be permitted to enter the United States. Ellen Richardson also had a troubling incident with U.S. Homeland Security. Last November, she too was turned away at U.S. Customs, told she's a risk. It's outrageous, really. It's outrageous. Uh, I am a, I am a law-abiding citizen. Neither woman has ever committed a crime or harmed anyone except themselves. They both attempted suicide. And that's a red flag for the men and women who guard the U.S. border. He said, well, we have a note here that in 2006, you had done violence to self, others, or property, and that you had attempted suicide. At that point, I was fingerprinted, I was photographed, and I was asked to uh, sign a waiver. That wasn't the end of it. Lois was told she couldn't enter the U.S. until she submitted her full medical history to a doctor, handpicked by U.S. Homeland Security. They wanted to know everything. Questions about HIV status, drug and alcohol use, sexually transmitted or communicable diseases. I mean, it was really absolutely unbelievable that they would be asking that depth of information. So your doctor had to give up your medical records? Essentially, yes. I also had to sign a waiver which indicated that this information that was now property of the American government and that I would have no say in how it could be used in the future. It must have felt like a huge invasion of privacy. Absolutely. Ellen also felt her privacy violated. She has a long history of mental illness. 13 years ago, she jumped off Toronto's Bloor Street Viaduct during a psychotic episode. That left her in a wheelchair, but she rebuilt her life. She wrote a book, started a website, and learned to care for herself. You get better, you'll, you'll feel better, and there is hope, there is hope. But then, two years ago, a relapse, another suicide attempt. And that's the one that popped up on the airport security screen last November as she was on her way to a Caribbean cruise. I answered his question and he cited this June 2012 hospitalization that I'd had for psychiatric reasons. I was aghast. I, I, I think I said something like, what does that have to do with my wanting to go on a vacation? The agent called it a medical episode. He took Ellen's picture and her fingerprints. It would take weeks to get the needed clearance from one of those Homeland Security doctors. So, no vacation. And cancelling the $5,600 ticket wasn't covered by her trip insurance. And they told me that being... Um, rejected at the border is not included in their policy. Ellen's episode was a pill overdose. Her mother called 911. Police arrived and Ellen was rushed to hospital. She survived, but now that failed attempt came back to haunt her. I was stamped uh, inadmissible to the U.S. and sent on my way. And I, I, I remember, you know, collecting my, my bags, just really feeling a bit, a bit stunned and, and so in shock. But how, she wondered, did U.S. border agents get her medical information? Ellen took that question to Ontario Privacy Commissioner Anne Kavukian. Kavukian was just as shocked. It was unbelievable to me that they turned her away for this. And at the time, uh, she offered the uh, border official to have a conversation with her psychiatrist, who obviously was treating her and knew her better than anyone, uh, could, uh, her, her state of mind. And they rejected that. They said, no, that's not acceptable. 
U.S. authorities make no apologies for their tough policy on suicide attempts. The law says anyone with a physical or mental disorder that may pose a threat to the property, safety or welfare of the alien or others will not be admitted to the U.S. No explanation of how that information crosses the border. It turns out that the police, when they respond to the 911 call, they automatically share that information with the RCMP. It goes into what's called the CPIC database. That information is automatically shared with Homeland Security, U.S. border crossing officials. So, in effect, people like Lois Kamenetz are now lumped in with criminals, potential terrorists, and other undesirables whose names set off an alert at border crossings. This information doesn't belong in a police database. This is a mental health issue. Since all police forces in Canada contribute to the National Police Database, what happened to Lois and Ellen can happen to anyone. There are as many as 75,000 suicide attempts in Canada every year. And that data doesn't go away. It can be vague or incomplete. And it can, for example, be used for background checks for certain jobs. Lois was unaware of the 911 call that put her name into the database. Attempting suicide is not a crime. I am not a criminal. But in this case, I was unconscious. I had taken an overdose of pills. No one else was in imminent danger. It was strictly a call for medical attention. I can't believe this is happening in my jurisdiction. We're going to fix this. That fix will have to begin here with police who feed all 911 information into the National Police Database. Toronto Police Spokesperson Mark Pugash says there's a good reason for keeping a record of these incidents. Our job is to protect all people. This is information that we must record and ultimately benefits people who might hurt themselves or protects people who might be hurt. But Kavukian says only certain information should be passed on. If an individual is brandishing a weapon, posing a threat of some kind, I can understand there will be certain situations in which you may wish to share the information with the RCMP and others. There's a concern with some of the folks we've spoken to that they did not commit a criminal act. At no point did they endanger anyone other than themselves, and yet this information was still recorded. You'd have to speak to the RCMP because the CPIC system is their system, and they set up the rules. The RCMP would not give 16 by 9 an interview. They did provide a statement saying their information sharing with the U.S. conforms to federal and provincial laws. But, and this is the big but, you have to exercise discretion. You can't automatically share all that information relating to attempted suicide. But if it has to be shared, why not include the positive things people like Lois are doing to get better? It's very discouraging when people seek treatment and they still continue to be seen as a threat or seen as a danger. This will scar them dramatically. My fear is when people hear about these stories, it will drive people underground. It will deter people from seeking much needed treatment and care because they're afraid their information is going to land in the hands of some unknown parties and that's exactly what's happening. Lois Kamenetz did not go underground. She sued the Toronto Police and Canada's Attorney General for $100,000 in damages. This was a really egregious abuse of power. My charter rights had been violated in the sense that my medical information, directly or indirectly, had ended up in another government's hands. But all this just adds to people's feeling of being marginalized. The lawsuit was resolved. But Lois is not able to reveal the settlement, a constraint she finds disturbing. However, the privacy commissioner is as forthright as ever. We're going to put a stop to it. That stop could come this spring when Kavukian issues a report on the practice. There should never be a flag on your name associated with this. It's nobody's business. This is not your business. It certainly isn't a border crossing person's uh, business. And we're going to change that.